Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Lockup. Episode 9... Oh, go ahead. Do it. You can do it. <laughs> episode 19. I'm your host, Junior Reed, alongside my co-host for this episode. Brian Adams. First of all, apologies. Two weeks in a row, no episodes. It's fine. Most of you don't listen anyway. Yeah. Oh, I should take that back because we said we were going to stop saying that. We, we, yeah, I'll just... That's nah, fine. That's yeah, fine. Nobody heard that because nobody listened. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome. Uh, like I said, episode nineteen of the lockup. So much has been going on in the last two to three weeks. You know, um, Night of Champions happened. Uh, Kana, now named Asuka, which is really weird because they pronounce it Asuka, or it's spelled Asuka, but it's pronounced Asuka. Go figure that. She's uh, debuted in NXT. Uh, there's news with the uh, the Jimmy the Jimmy Snuka trial thing. Uh, I, there's just so much going on, so so much. So where do you want to start with? I have no idea. It's just so much. We could start with Night of Champions. Let's start with Night of Champions. Was do it, you want to? Yeah, let's right, go let's do for it. it. Let's start with Night of Champions. What do you were you going to ask were you, me something? Were you disappointed? No. So it was you know in my opinion Night of Champions was a very solid pay per view. I was so very surprised. It lived up to your expectations. Yeah. It really did. Um, I, the only thing going into it, you know, that, that was the main wonder was, does Sting walk away as the WWE champion? Does he hold the belt for five seconds? So, so they you, can get that you, fan footage and say, you know what, Sting is officially a champion. Do you want to hit that first, or do you just want to bounce around on it since I mean, we can it's bounce been a while? Around on it. It's fine. Okay. I am so, so surprised that they didn't give him the belt. Really? For at least five seconds. Okay. Like, I expected that John Cena and Seth Rollins would have a brutal war for the U.S. title. Mm -hmm. And they had a great match. Yes, they did. And I felt like that Rollins would then struggle with Sting because of the match. Okay. And that he would still put on a performance for because I feel like every pay per view they're building fan respect for Rollins being the champion. With him putting on good matches and surviving. And I felt like that it would just be the one time where he wasn't able and you would let it slide because he had had a match earlier. Right. And then I expected a cash in. Yeah, as there, as did everybody. Yeah. I think. So I expected Five seconds of Sting champion, much like when Daniel Bryan won, and then they they took it. Didn't they take it away from him? Not the same night. Or he was okay. He it wanted it at WrestleMania, night. so he got so he had it for a day. Yeah, but I expected something similar to that, where Sting had it for a brief moment, and then like cash in Sheamus, then Sheamus the champion, and then you know we would have got Hell in the Cell with Rollins and Sheamus. Okay, here's my thing. Here, here's a couple things. For one, going back to the Cena thing. That match was very brutal. Great match. Those two guys can really go. You know, and it's like they can they can work together very, very well. Unlike Sheamus Orton or Cena Orton, you know, you're, you're tired of seeing those matches. With Rollins and Cena, we've seen this match already three or four times, but each time it feels fresh. You know, going into it, you're like, F***ing this again? Yeah, right. As you watch the match, you're like, man, that was a great match. My personal opinion, their best match was SummerSlam. But, um... Uh, to go back to Night of Champions, that was a great match. I did like how they put them through the quote unquote gauntlet, and they're, you know, you got one right after the other. Um, I'm glad Sting wrestled without the stupid t shirt. Yeah. Because it just seems like he's, like they say in the wrestling community, phoning it in. Like, right. nah, man. Like, yeah, he came out, he was ready to fight. Um, very brutal match, I thought. That spot where. They were standing on the announce table, and Rollins just pushed Sting, and Sting fell into the Spanish announce table. That was brutal. He banged his head on the uh, on the monitor. I honestly thought that's when he got injured, but they say no. It was during the buckle bomb, you know. And it was a very scary moment watching Sting duck that clothesline and his feet giving out from under him, and he just f hits the ground, you know. So, but um, yeah, it was, I'm, uh... I'm glad with that that they didn't give it to him. But they said that the the it finished the way it was supposed to finish with the roll up. They did everything the right way, the way it was planned out. They just rushed it because of the fact that Sting was injured. Um, so, in a sense, I'm glad Sting didn't get the belt because it 
it does indeed build up Rollins. Um, I'm a big fan of Rollins and what he's doing. It seems like, you know, he is reminding me little by little of that old school heel where in certain situations that it doesn't suit him, he's going to run away with his tail between his legs. Right. But when he's got the advantage, he's going to press on. You yeah. know, and that's classic heel. No, it's definitely classic heel. And it seems like that's where they're going with him, which is what they need to keep doing. Um, now, did Sting not winning the belt bother me? Yes and no. Yes, because the guy is, I guess... He's the icon. Yeah, he is. But the way you look at it, he's had two big matches. WrestleMania, which he lost, and Night of Champions, which he lost. But if you really want to be technical, you can say he's two and two because he had the singles match on Raw that he won, yeah. and then they turned it into a tag match that he won. But I guess where it counts is what... Is when it counts. Yeah, and, you know, like, the guy needs a big win. It's, before I they feel like they brought him the in... Fame, he, needs, he needs a belt. I feel like they brought him in just because of the name. Yeah. And it's just like, well, we're going to bury this guy. Now, it's different if... Because I know on, if you can look at it, like, um, his point of view is, well, he, and he even said it himself, his time's passed. He wants to work with the younger guys and put the younger guys up and over. Perfect. But he still needs a win. Yeah. You know, he needs a big win. Um, I would like to see, as a fan, I would like to see him, before he goes into Hoff, have that belt one time. Yeah. Now, here's my thing. The, the injury... He's 56 years old. Does the WWE or are... Can't get into words. It's been a long two weeks. Does the WWE take more caution when placing or booking Sting in a future match now? Do you think they protect him a little bit more? Or do you think it's one of those things where it's like, okay, you're okay, all right, you're good to go? Because then look at Daniel Bryan. What do you I think? mean, well, it's it's how much how much gas is in the tank really for Sting. I think is would answer that question. Do you feel like you could get a good couple years out of him, or are you just going to get one good year? Because if it's just going to be one good solid year, then if he's okay to wrestle, then press on. Like you said, I mean, he's fifty six. Is he going to be doing this when he's sixty? Very true. I mean, is it going to be like a Ric Flair thing where it's just like you know, you went too long? Yeah, but even Flair sat down finally. True. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm happy for Rollins keeping the belt. I'm happy, uh, Sting's injury is not as bad as it looked. You know, everything came back saying that he's okay. Nothing's fractured. Nothing's broken. So, uh, that's good. Um, I'm curious to see what his next feud is. Uh, rumors are saying that it's WrestleMania 32 against Bray Wyatt. I don't want to see I don't, that. I don't see that. If I were to see Sting versus Wyatt, give it to me at a smaller pay-per-view like Royal Rumble right. or give it to me at like Survivor Series, don't give it to me at WrestleMania. I know they've built such a an ongoing feud with him and uh, Roman, Roman Reigns. Reigns that I don't really see why that would even fit the bill. And we can transition to that. Now it's a good you segue. Know. Let's go. Roman Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and the Wyatts. What and did you Chris think? Chris Jericho. Yeah. What, what, what was your response that, when that, Jericho came seriously, out? Seriously, that was honestly a what the f***? moment you think so yeah why chris jericho it was a, a chris jericho out of nowhere it's like we're going to war we've been at war we're going to war with these big bayou guys you know like they roman's not a small guy yeah no totally not. so i um, at you know i obviously have never seen Braun Strowman in person that's a big boy he's a big dude wouldn't you go get yourself another machine ish yeah, totally. kind of person not the guy with the light up jacket, right? You know, like what are you gonna like, blink him to death? Like, what was the purpose of that? I don't know. And then how it all played out at the end, yeah, where Jericho tags himself in and gets the loss, and then shoves off Ambrose. Right. Like they're teasing a heel turn there, like, like, I, you know, he's done. As far as I'm concerned, Jericho is done. Bury him. It's in the past. Yeah. His best day. Him and his weird collapsed bird chests need to take his ball and go home. It looks creepy every time I see him. He should, he should start rustling in a singlet or, or a shirt or something so I ain't got to see a shirt. Go home, dude. I'd rather see RVD than you. Because I, it that was, match was a waste, man. Like, where was... Is is uh, uh, 
uh, Eric Rowan still injured? Yeah. So, okay, that, then that makes sense. Because I really expected Eric Rowan. Right. And that, for me, would have made the match then. But when it was Chris Jericho, it was like, seriously? Yeah. Get the hell out of here. I don't want Jericho. The only way it would make sense to me is if Jericho was back on TV again for a while and he was going to feud with Dean Ambrose. But it doesn't look like they're going that route. Yeah, no. So what was the point? Yeah, th- what was the point? Was it just, hey, he's here, let's use him? Oh, and you know what? Let me, let's me let step back to Rollins. We forgot about Sting's, Sting Rollins. Okay. Kane. The return of oh, yeah, we, we totally the st- Demon King. We over. totally glossed over that. That's how unimportant it is to us. Well, first of all, let me say, Sheamus and this Money in the Bank briefcase. I've never seen anybody in the history of the Money in the Bank briefcase not know how to properly cash it in. The two times that he's tried, it's like him and the referee have no idea what's going on. Here, take the briefcase. What do I want this for? You got to cash it in. Do I? Why do I have to cash it in? Because I'm asking you to. Am I supposed to hand it in to you to cash in? I guess so. He doesn't look like he knows how to cash it in, and the referee doesn't look like he knows what he's doing either. It's, yeah, it looks, it's looking it's, very... I, I get the stall. Like the first time when he tried to do it on Raw, and Orton, they were stalling because Orton was supposed to RKO him and stuff like that. I get that. I get right. the stall, but it was it looks really, really bad. Yeah, no, it does. It's like he doesn't know how to do it. And, like, what was the the purpose of, like, Kane's another guy. Like, no disrespect to the guy because, obviously, he can still move. He can still wrestle well. It's not like a big show, you know, who's getting a weird push for some reason if you've been watching Raw the last yeah. couple weeks. I just, like, eh, you know, why? I don't like that they're, they're uh, going the abyss angle. Yeah. You, you've noticed that. I know you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, no, unfortunately, I don't. You know Abyss from TNA? I know who Abyss is from TNA. Joseph Parks' angle where he was Abyss, but he was also Joseph Parks, and he did, like, it was the multiple, the dual personality. Yeah, I, I figured that's what they were doing, but I actually didn't know about that. Yeah, I, so now that's what they're doing. Kane, corporate Kane. Right. Like, whatever, man. Whatever. Yeah, it's, seriously. But that, that was, to me, that was disappointing. And then the Bray Wyatt match, that was Jericho is disappointing. And then even more disappointing, maybe not so much to you, but Ryback dropping the IC title to Kevin Owens. Yes and no. Does Owens deserve that belt? Of course. We both have sat here at length and discussed Kevin Owens' strength. Mm -hmm. I feel, though, that it was too soon because they were just Ryback as the IC champ was actually starting to gain a little bit more momentum, and I, the belt looked good on Ryback. He looks like a guy who should be a champion. Yeah. And um, it also, if anything, could have built Ryback up enough to give you a reason to see him go after the, the heavyweight belt. Kind of. I mean, eventually, a good run with that IC title, they're building you up to move on. Yeah. No, here. No, you're wrong. Because when was the last time anybody had a good run with an IC title? Yeah, I don't, I don't... Exactly. Stone Cold? <laughs> the IC title used to be the workhorse title. It's not that anymore. And you know why it's not that anymore? I'll tell you. The Madison Square Garden show they got coming up on the network in a couple weeks. Yeah. The main event is Seth Rollins versus John Cena in a cage for the United the States, States belt. Yeah. The heavyweight belt's not even being uh, defended. What is that? Yeah, that's weird, man. That's I, I feel like, and we've said this before, they mishandled their belts in WWE. They do. The belts are nothing but a prop now. Yeah. It really is. And it's sad. It really is. Because I remember, like, back in the day when somebody was the IC champ, you're like, man, that's gonna, that's money right there. That's going to be the guy. Right. You know? Like when Shawn Michaels was the Intercontinental Champion. You remember that? Like, dude, like, yeah, I think Brett was the, the, the heavyweight at the time or taker. And you're like, yeah, that's cool. But it was like a whole separate world, you know? Now it's like they all merged together. Right. It's Now it's just sloppy. Yeah. It's a big sloppy mess. Like, it used to be you had your heavyweight champion, you had your contenders for the belt. You had the IC titles, you had the contenders for the belt. And now it's just like, you know, it's just, it's there. just confusing. And it's as funny as it is to say, I feel like it was less confusing when they had the hardcore title, the European title... You know, when they had all those much. other titles, the light heavyweight. You know what because it was? Because you had 
groups of guys and you knew who was in what class. No, no, no. You know what I think was the downfall of all this? Getting rid of the jobbers. Yeah, totally. Because you would have... Can you imagine if, like, you had Kevin Owens fighting a couple jobbers every week, Ryback fighting a couple jobbers, and you had to wait for that pay-per-view, and that's when you got the big payoff match. But now it's like they fight every week on Raw and SmackDown. They have tag matches, and then it's like then they have... Technically, the pay-per-view match is almost like a rematch now. Yeah. You know, it's like... Uh... Yeah, that's, yeah, that's like we've said before in the past. It's like you get the same match week in and week out, week in and week out, week in and week out. Yeah. Like, there was that point to where it was like, I, I want to say it was Randy Orton and somebody. It yeah. was constantly Randy Orton, Randy Orton, Randy Orton, Randy Orton, Randy Orton. It's like, okay, dude. You I'm get it. sick of seeing this match. I've seen it ten times already. I don't Randy want to Orton see it in a pay-per-view. Yeah, it's, no, 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 no. Yeah, the dude, they need to bring back the job squad. <laughs> yeah, Nice. Nice. Um, moving on. What did you think the uh, the Dudleys in the New Day? Oh, uh, that was with, good. Uh, Xavier Woods sporting his Rufio hair. Yeah, I, that was cool. It was uh, that was a strange do for Xavier Woods. Channeling his inner Rufio, man. Um, yeah, totally. I was kind of disappointed that the Dudleys did not walk away with it for really? the tenth time. Yeah, nah. I really felt like the whole reason they brought the Dudleys back in was let's give them the titles for the tenth time. Let's then let's they can drop the titles. They can build up the tag division a little bit, and then we put them in the Hall of Fame. They will eventually because the Dudleys are signed full time. We talked about this. Yeah, that's true. That's true. They will eventually, but right now it's the New Day. New Day is so friggin' over. It's yeah, sick. Yeah, exactly. So sick. Exactly. And what happened? Did I not call this? No, absolutely. Did I not call this? Absolutely. I give you one hundred percent credit. You were totally correct. I'm telling you. Like it's messed up that they built that. Like that. Every like. To, to build them, to not go over, to have them go over. Yep. Like, now I'm confused sometimes when I hear New Day chants, if they're saying New Day wrong. Like, I really feel like the crowd is starting to get behind New Day. Yeah, they are. And it's weird. One of the most brutal spots in that match is when uh, Big E splashed the, uh, Bubba Ray when he's, like, hanging off the apron. That, was a, that, that match itself was a little bit brutal. I think it was a little bit more brutal than... Than you would normally see, you know, but that's just uh, this is just that's what I took away from it. You so know? how about that Divas title match? That was uh, that was strange. Like, is it just me or did like Nikki Bella put on the most brutal performance as champion since she's had the belt? That's my thing. Only to lose she it. She put on the brutal performance. She put on the performance. Not Charlotte. Yeah. You know, all Char- Well, yeah, no, I take that back. That's not fair because Charlotte sold all that stuff for her. You know, but yeah, Nikki really stepped up and she, I, I think that match was Nikki getting tired of everybody saying, you know, that she's just a, a placeholder. Um, that was her coming out and saying, you know what, this is why I held the belt as long as I did. Not because of who I'm with behind the scenes, not because of a record, but... This is why this is what they saw in me to keep the belt on me this long. So props to her. That was a great match. Um, I was listening to uh, Russell's Own Daily last week, and they were saying how they didn't see the page turn coming. Like, are you are you? How did you not see that? They're like, there's no, there was no build up to Page turning on Charlotte the next night at Raw. There, you know, it seemed out of place. I have to disagree with that a hundred and fifty percent because if you watch them. Every week for the last few weeks, Paige has been very distant. She hasn't been very happy. You can just see it. Well, you it can see the, the night obvious. they had the beat the clock matches. Yeah, it's that, yeah that's you when could, it started. You can see it exactly. right there. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly when it started. Like, So for them to say that, I have to disagree with them on that. But well, I saw that turn coming a mile away. And, and then the next night on Raw, when it happened, I was just yeah, like... Dude. In my opinion, at some point, this is supposed to be a Divas revolution. Let the revolution begin. Because exactly. in my opinion, it hasn't really started. They need to break away you, from the tag. Yeah, they the get groups. rid of the stables. Dump these stables, let these girls start competing. Yeah. Um, the promo page dropped the next night on Raw when she turned. What did you think? I, I liked it, man. I did too. I, I thought it was um, very CM Punk, AJ-esque. You know, we all know how Nikki and Brie got to where they're at, you know. Um... You know, she pretty much called out Becky Lynch on being the character she is. She's like, half people don't even know who you are, you know. Where the hell is Natty? 
You know, just stuff like that. I mean, she and I tw- I tweeted that night. I says, you know, Paige just pretty much echoed and said everything that 99% of the internet wrestling community has been saying for months. She just pretty much aired it all out. So that um, turn was, I, I was very happy with it. I, I was expected. I'm happy it happened, you know, because I feel those two are going to put on a really great match. Matches. I'm really disappointed. They should be the first Divas to have a Hell in a Cell match. I'm calling it now. Nice. They it could, should. It could happen. I have a three-way. Nikki, what? Charlotte, and Paige. In the, in the cell. I, I, I hate to, like, I feel like a broken record, because I don't even know if it's more me talking to you personally and not on the show, but Natalia deserves that belt, dude. Yeah, I agree. Because they're obviously going to push her aside at some point, and she needs a good solid run with that belt. I agree. At least at least give it to her for six months. Yeah. You know, she, uh, she I believe she tweeted or something. I know she answered Paige's question, like, where Natty has been. Her answer was, my husband's got a broken neck. That's where I've been, you know? Yeah. But uh, they say she's ready to come back. Well, she came back. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. She did. Uh, man, just so much stuff coming out of it. You know, during the Night of Champions pay-per-view, it was advertised the Go to Hell Brock Lesnar tour. You know, starting with the Madison Square Garden match against the Big Show. Yawn. Yeah. Then October 19th, he will be on the Stone Cold podcast, which is also interesting because Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels are also going to be on that show Along with Undertaker and Brock Lesnar. Wow. All on Monday Night Raw. That will be a hell of a show to listen to. There, No, 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 not the podcast. Oh, just on the, the show. The podcast is Austin and Brock Lesnar. Okay, dude, what a show. Yeah, I saw, that's going to be interesting. Very, especially the way that the Heyman-Austin one ended. Yes. Um, supposedly, Vince McMahon was furious off camera at the Paul Heyman-Austin, the end of it, when they teased the Texas death match and the... Like they said McMahon was about to like pop an aneurysm. Why? Um, Why get angry about for that? For teasing good... something that they weren't going to deliver on. But Austin said, you know. Yeah, this well, it was all it speculation. Is. I mean, right. fans know that. Well, the rumor, the, the, what they're saying is uh, Shawn Michaels, I, uh, Ric Flair, and I believe Stone Cold is the third one, uh, are all going to be on Raw, in ring. Similar to, I forgot who it was, but when they had Hogan, Brian, and Flair. And they were in the ring and they were kind of getting their thoughts on who was going to win the big title match. Right, right. It's going to be something similar, but asking about Lesnar and Undertaker and Hell in a Cell. So, that should be I'm, interesting to see what Austin says and then to have Brock Lesnar on his podcast later that night. Austin's been having some great guests on his show lately, man. Yeah. I'm behind, but I've been like, every time they're like, oh man, oh. Like, he's going to have... Did he just have Bishop on last week? No, that's... Um, or no, that's JBL's show. Which I watched. Yeah? I, that, I need to check that out. That was good. Yeah? That was a two-parter. Um, the first part was interesting. Wasn't as, quote-unquote, meaty, but it was still good. Part two, great. Um, it was revealed that Vince... When Bischoff challenged Vince McMahon, McMahon was going... They had to talk him out of it. And nice. then they said that it was also Stephanie McMahon's graduation that weekend or something like that. But Bischoff told JBL, I wish he would have showed up. He was like, I would have let him beat me senseless. He was like, I've taken, I, I, I've been in the hospital for free. This would have been a pay-per-view match on a WCW pay-per-view. I would have gladly been hospitalized for that. But That would have been epic, man. That'd it would have. I mean, you know what? It was really, really good. Um, I always love listening to... Bischoff discuss things like that because one of Bischoff's outs, I guess, when they ask him about this or that, and it makes perfect sense for him to say, I might have said that. I don't recall. I'm not doubting that I wouldn't have said it. I love that he says that because he's saying, yeah, I probably said it. I don't remember. It's not important enough for me to remember. I like that he that he talked trash about Russo. Yes. Yes. He was very blunt about it. I, You know, hey. Yeah, well, we're done recording today. I'm going to have to watch that. It was good. Yeah. It really was. Uh, they, uh, they're they working on a uh, documentary for Bischoff. Nice. Just like the Paul Heyman. I don't know if you've seen the Paul Heyman. Hello, my name is Paul Heyman. Uh, awesome. Probably. I'm, I'm like, I'm waiting for the, is it on the network yet? I don't know. Probably the best documentary ever made for WWE. Yeah. Uh, and 
if they play it the right way, Bischoff could either surpass it or be equal to. I mean, cause, dude, it's Eric Bischoff. You know, the guy. It's Eric. Yeah. What, yeah. what else can you say? Other than it's Eric Bischoff. Um, but, the only uh, thing, though, like one of the things they announced was that they're making the documentary talent pending. So the only thing I can think of talent pending would be Hulk Hogan. I can't see them producing a correct version of the Eric Bischoff documentary without Hogan being yeah, included totally. in it. Yeah, totally. Because Hogan and Bischoff are really tight, you know? So, I mean, that's just... Yeah. Um, this is kind of coming out of left field, but it kind of ties in at Night of Champions and also funky hairstyles. Um, Ring of Honor had their pay-per-view... The Friday before Night of Champions, the okay. same weekend. Okay. okay. Now, it, it kind of struck me as funny that Jay Lethal, the current Ring of Honor champion, also their television champion, defended both of his titles at the pay per view mm-hmm. the same weekend as Seth Rollins. Right. So now, this kind of feeds into me for what you were saying about how WWE is trying to bury them. Would that would it be that they're trying to buy? By aping the same storylines that they're using, could be, very well could be. By the way, Dawson, uh, Dalton Castle, one of my favorite flamboyant wrestlers in Ring of Honor, lost his boys. Oh yeah. Do you know? Of, are you aware of the boys? No. He has these these two dudes that are basically like in weird. They're almost in like Aztec garb. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. With yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, masks, yeah, yeah. and they fan him. Yeah. 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 He lost them in a match. Really? To who? To uh, the oh god, I can't remember his name now. He's the the, the last the last real man. I can't remember his name though. Uh-huh. It was they had an epic match. Yeah, but he lost the boys. It was really disappointing. All right, kind of weird how the last real man wants the boys. Yeah. Okay. Well, his whole thing was he's going to take the boys and he's going to teach them how to like work on cars and tr- disrespect women and all this manly. Sh- it was hilarious, <laughs> man. Okay, so good pay per view, man. Jay Lethal, Jay Lethal usually he's got the nice tight cornrow braids. braids. Yeah. yeah, had them three, and the rest of his hair was kind of like an afroish mess. Mm. It's really weird hairstyle. I've seen it before. I like that guy. I've dude. actually that, sported that, that hairstyle back when I had hair. Really? Yeah. That guy, dude, has one of the sweetest finishers in wrestling. The lethal injection. Yeah. Like when he does the forward uh, cartwheel into the ropes and then bounces back off and. Yeah. Basically like Stone Cold Stunner. Yeah. Man, love, love that move. Um, That guy needs to do it. Actually, that guy doesn't need to be in WWE. He should. Uh, he's got the talent. Oh, yeah. So, a couple of side notes I mentioned earlier, the Jimmy Snuka mm-hmm. thing. Uh, now his attorney who accompanied him when he surrendered to authorities is yeah. no longer his attorney. Really? So Jimmy Snuka has no attorney at the moment. Wow. Yep. Uh what else did I mention? There was something else I had mentioned at the top of the show. I can't remember. Do you remember? No, okay. I don't. Well, I don't remember. Um, but uh, let's, before I, I, I jump into some speculation here, I want to finish off um, some WWE talk with uh, the Hell in a Cell. Lesnar Undertaker. Mm-hmm. This is supposed to be their final match. It was bumped from WrestleMania 32 to Hell in a Cell, which is great because now it frees up both of them for a Survivor Series, and it frees both of them up, more importantly, for WrestleMania. I want to know your thoughts going in. Okay, so now we know Lesnar is not going to fight Undertaker at WrestleMania 32. That opens the card for both of them. Who do you see them putting Lesnar against, and who do you see them putting Taker against? Uh, well, I, I hate that I just left seconds of silence there because I'm like, oh. No, it's fine. It adds you know, in. I, I really am, I, I really don't know who they could put Taker up against. Like, There's only two names I want to see Taker go against. Honestly. I, I, honestly, a Taker Sting match would be cool. Yeah, they need to give us that. But I'm not sure that, like, okay, maybe before this last Brock-Taker match, I could have felt like Sting and Ta- or Sting and Taker would have been an okay match, but I feel like Taker picked up the pace, dude. Like I'm excited to see this Hall of the Cell match because I feel like we saw an Undertaker when he last fought Brock that we haven't seen in years. Mm-hmm. I felt like the last 
couple WrestleMania appearances for him have been kind of, uh, you like know. Like the Bray Wyatt one was just yeah. kind of, yeah. It's the CM Punk one. Yeah. Even, even that was, I felt like CM Punk carried a lot of that match. He did, he did. And um, the, the Brock one was okay, but this last match was excellent, man. Yeah. Like, he looked like a new man. And I hope to see that Undertaker at Hell in the Cell. So, but going back, who do you... I I couldn't say, um, I, you know, Sting would be good for Taker. Brock, it would be nice to see him get back into the championship picture. Yes, I agree. Because otherwise, what's the point of having him around? No, I agree. Yeah, he should be because he never got his revenge on Rollins. Yeah, no. Um, there's only two names when I think of Undertaker at WrestleMania that I want to see. Actually, three. I take that back. One, of course, being Sting. I think that'd be a decent match because they're both, uh, they're both around the same age. Mm-hmm. So fine, just give us that match, please. Yeah, totally. We all want it. Just give it to us. It's like really, if you look about it, it's two of the last guys that are actually capable and still currently wrestling from that era. Now here, here's my thing. If they do that at WrestleMania, who goes over? Do you have Sting with two back-to-back WrestleMania losses? Or do you put Taker over because it's Taker's the, the WWE guy? Okay, well, what if you put Sting over, but Taker loses because of, like, Brock Lesnar? Nah. Nah, it's got to be a, a clean finish, man. Or maybe they set up a, a, a feud with Bray Wyatt again. Ah. Because, you know, Bray wants to be the new face of fear. Why is this old guy still around when it, this is me now? But it was boring the first time. It was boring the first time. But that doesn't mean they won't do it, because that's what WWE does. Like, I don't know. They need to give Sting the damn WrestleMania win already. It's just going against Undertaker at WrestleMania, I don't see, it doesn't even matter anymore, because there is no streak on the line. So, I, I don't know, man. I really don't know. I just, I want to see that match. I want to see it at WrestleMania. I just don't want Sting to lose. Um, if I saw it at Survivor Series and Sting lost, I'd be okay with it. Because I still got the match. Right. But to me, that screams more of a WrestleMania match. I don't know. The only other two names I can think of for WrestleMania, Undertaker, John Cena, and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Those are the only other two names I can think of. Stone Cold needs to be part of WrestleMania 32. Day. Why not? They're in Dallas. They're You know, WWE's trying to sell out all these seats, you know. Supposedly, it's all hands on deck. We'll see. Um, I would love to see Austin in one final match. Oh, it's, you and everybody else. One um, one person who, according to Dana White, that won't be at WrestleMania 32. Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey. Yeah. Like, he's like, you know, she's got a lot of stuff on her plate. She's a very busy woman. He's like, besides, why would you, what, what exactly did he say? Why would you want to see her in, re- in some fake, re- or why would you want to see her wrestle when you can see her fight for real? Dana White needs to shut up. He's an ass, dude. He needs to shut up. Because Ronda Rousey is going to do what she wants to do. Plain and simple. No, absolutely. Uh, but finally, my last uh, my last thing for, uh, for lockup this week. Some speculation. Okay. Some stuff I've noticed. I don't know if you've picked up on it. I want to see what your thoughts are, if you've even picked up on it. We know that your favorite company, TNA, mm-hmm. is pretty much almost done with their TV deal. They've got one show after Bound for Glory, and then that's it so far. There's a couple things going on with WWE that make me wonder if they know something that the public doesn't. Maybe Vince is planning on buying TNA. Maybe he already bought TNA. A couple things. One, the most notable, the Hardys. WWE has made it a habit of not mentioning wrestlers that are not under contract to them that are currently under contract to somebody else. Right. Hardy Boys' names have been coming up a lot in WWE lately. The pictures, like the Edge and Christian podcast, they discussed uh-huh. it. They even showed their, their photo. Their, you know, There's a lot of speculation that Matt and Jeff will be coming back to WWE very, very soon. Um, Matt Hardy has gone on saying, I want to go back to WWE at some point. If I don't, I don't, but I want to. Um, just a lot of speculation. And then the fact that they're constantly mentioning them and showing them now. When the Dudleys first returned, the commentary team acknowledged that the Dudleys were 20-something, 27, 28-time tag champs. That number would include 
their tag team reign in TNA. Dun, dun, dun. That's true. WWE Spanish commentators are a lot more, uh, they have a lot more elbow room than the English commentators because Vince isn't screaming in their headphones like he is to them. Right. During Sting's Night of Champions, was it Night of Champions or WrestleMania? One of those. I believe it was WrestleMania. The commentators acknowledged that Sting was wrestling in TNA. Hmm. Lastly, when Sting appeared in the WWE, their nickname for him was what? The Vigilante. Right. He was not known as the Icon Sting until he went to TNA. Like, he might have been mentioned once or twice in WCW as the Icon, but it wasn't a moniker that actually, like, how you would call Stone Cold the Texas Rattlesnake. Right. It, that was not something that stuck until his TNA days. TNA made it their thing to call him the Icon Sting. WWE is now acknowledging him as the Icon Sting. Back when Sting destroyed Seth Rollins' statue, that was very Joker-esque Sting, which was a character only made in TNA. Too many things there. Just in my opinion, too many things that WWE is quote-unquote letting slip through the cracks. And there's got to be something to it. I could see him purchasing TNA, not for obviously their ring, not for any of the talent, but for the video library and putting that on the WWE network. What are your thoughts? Did you pick up on any of that stuff? I had noticed all that stuff, but I never really gave any thought to it. Okay. Because I figured that WWE is so far above TNA that there's no point. It would kind of make sense, though, if he did buy them, why the GFW storyline played out as it did for those that actually follow TNA. I don't know if you do. Right. But they had a huge match a couple weeks ago where uh, it was GFW versus TNA. Yeah. And whoever won would take control of TNA and GFW lost. Yeah. Well, you know, also, Jeff Jarrett and WWE don't have a very, very good relationship. Yeah, no. um, one of the other things that was circ- uh, going around was that maybe WWE was waiting until Jeff Jarrett had absolutely nothing to do with TNA, which now he does not. At first, he had, I think it was some sort of ownership with TNA, even though he wasn't involved. He was yeah. still like a fractional owner. Uh-huh. They say he has 0% to do with TNA now. He is officially 1,000% done any aspect of TNA. Really? Yes. So, now that Vince does not have to deal with Jeff Jarrett, it's just him and Dixie Carter. What's not to say, you know, you you go and you make some sort of deal with Dixie. You know? Can you imagine Dixie Carter and EC3 come in to NXT or to SmackDown? They're the new general managers of SmackDown or something. You know? Can you imagine Dixie Carter coming out? It'd be like when Eric Bischoff came out on right, Raw. No, totally. You know? It'd be like, <sighs> your mind would blow. You know? It, it, it's possible. Things, stranger things have happened. Yeah. Um, just just a lot there to to really think about. Um, also, SmackDown moving to USA at the beginning of 2016. They need to do something big. They need to shake it up. Um, I don't know if you saw my blog that I wrote um, about the, the Raw and SmackDown brand split again. I think that's the direction they might go, and I honestly think Mattel spoiled that. Because the photos released for the Battle Pack 37 series have... The Usos, j j Security, and The Ascension. That's that's Series 37 for Battle Packs. The uh, Usos packaging... Is that The Ascension's first figures? Yes. Nice. First time in line. I gotta get those. Um, they are branded Raw, mm-hmm. whereas j j Security and The Ascension are branded SmackDown. Why do that? Yeah, that sounds like a branding to me, man. I think when they come back... When, they go to, when SmackDown comes to USA in 2016... They need to do something different. Something different could be brand split. Bring in Dixie Carter as a GM of SmackDown. Can you imagine that? What are they gonna? What do you think they'll do with the talent there, though? TNA talent. Ninety percent of them are signed with GFW already. Oh, really? Well, a good chunk of them. Wow. That or they go on the independents. You bring in just a handful. Bring in guys like Bram. Eric Young. Bring in guys. Yeah, right. 
Um, what? I had to think about that for a second. I like that guy. Isn't he the one that got popped for uh, the, the... He got arrested a while back for domestic abuse, remember? Did he really? Yeah. What the... No, I didn't hear that. Yeah, he got... um, Like, dom- like supposedly they found... Or his girlfriend called the cops. He was the one that was married to uh, Charlotte. Really? Yeah. Like, they're still... They're in the process of getting a divorce currently. I did not know that. Yeah. Um... He was uh, he was arrested under um, what what what's the exact word uh, a false imprisonment or something like that and abuse the fossil or domestic what? abuse or whatever they said that he locked his girlfriend in the room or whatever and we opened the door they they uh, they found his handprints around her neck Jesus yeah well that's no good so Bram ain't coming nowhere near WWE yeah no I would but you bring in guys like. Uh, EC3. You bring in Dixie Carter. You bring in guys like Eric Young. You know, you bring the Hardys back. There's 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 some TNA talent in there that you can bring over. You know, bring Bobby Roode. Bring uh, James Storm. You know? Uh, Austin Aries. I don't think I'm done with James Storm. What is... Dude, Austin Aries isn't around right now. There's rumors because his contract is expiring soon. And they're starting to eyeball him a little bit more. AJ Styles over to WWE. Really? Yep. Uh, AJ has gone on record in the past saying he's not against going to WWE. He's going where it would benefit AJ Styles and his family. You know, uh, Kurt Angle is another one who's taking a year away from wrestling now, especially with the tragic news that happened last week with his brother. Did you hear about that? I did. Um, but they said he's taking a year off from uh, wrestling. He wants to come back to WWE. Let him. Uh, another name not associated with TNA that supposedly WWE made an offer to and he turned down because it was so low, Carlito. 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 I miss that guy's fro. That guy had a great fro. <laughs> That's the only thing I really liked about him, though. He really it's, did, yeah. No. Great fro, man. So, I mean, just so much going on right now in wrestling. Um, you know, like, just... Wrap your head around it, man. But just so much. I'm processing TNA and WWE, and that's pretty heavy. Like, they could even do, like, a new invasion storyline. I hope not. Even I honestly think... To death. I think WWE is... It, we both know, we both said this, it's been pretty lackluster la- this last year, maybe two years or whatever. I think in 2016, it's going to pick up a little bit more. Yeah. I, I honestly think so. I really do. That would be great, man, because, you know, it, it. not that things haven't been, not that this hasn't been a solid year for WWE, but you got to keep that train rolling, man. At some point, at some point, you have to surpass the Attitude Era. That'll never happen. You don't think so? Now, with not today's day, with, with society being as uh, sensitive as they are and everything causing butt hurt here or there, no, no, they they can't go back to that. They won't, especially I'm because when the attitude era happened. I'm not saying go back. All right, but you said surpass. So they're gonna yeah. have to be like a little bit more extreme than that, which they probably won't do. Especially because when the attitude era happened, they still weren't. They were in the process of becoming a public company. So they've got you know sponsors and and, and investors and right. everything like that now. So it's different. Um, my personal opinion: what they need to do is get rid of. 30 to 40 writers on a committee or whatever have you yeah, and go seriously. back to Vince McMahon and maybe two or three other guys and that's it. Because they, it was a very tight... During the Attitude Era, it was Vince, Pat Patterson, and then you either had uh, Vince Russo and um, Jim Cornette or you had Vince Russo and Ed Ferrara. But it was only a handful of people, the like four to five guys I max. think they need to let these guys loose on the mics too, man. Well, that has to do with the writing. Like, uh, you know, instead of having it such tight knit, like let them, let them go a little bit. They they need to. I mean, and some of the guys seem a little more natural at it, even though you know they're reading, they're reciting a script, right? And some of them are just like, well, what? That's what worked during the Attitude Era was bullet points. Yeah. Mention this, this, and this. Go. Now it's like mention this, this, and this. This is how you mention it. This is the order you should mention it in. You know, it's like, come on, man. Oh, one thing before we cut, before we close out the show. How do you feel about them pretty much killing Cesaro? 
I'm not liking it. I am not liking it. They need to do another faction with Cesaro. You need you need to have three or four guys who are right there that the fans want to see, but they're not pushing. Cesaro, maybe somebody like Kevin Owens, um, you know, uh, uh, Damian Sandow, who's re-debuted his blue robe gimmick again. Oh, he's back. Uh, live shows, live shows. Um, you, you just have a crew like that, and you have them come out in suits. You know, we're ti- kind of like Evolution, kind of like Main Event Mafia kind of guys. And it's, you know what? We're tired of this. We're the workhorses. We're the guys week in and week out that are really pulling off these hardcore matches. And the fans are going crazy when we come out, but we're getting buried. We're tired of it. And that's the kind of stuff they need. Yeah. But they are talking about bringing, I don't know if you, I know your boy, you watch NXT. Have you noticed uh, Finn Balor's uh, entrance videos lately? You have not noticed them. I really. Balor Club. Really? I didn't notice that. Because you know uh, he was, he created Bullet Club. Yeah, I know you said that before. Balor Club has been coming up a lot on his, uh, they've been coming up on his interests now on the screen. Yeah. They're, they're, they're thinking about pushing that and turning Finn Balor heel. Yeah. We'll see. I wonder if he work as a heel. I don't th- you know what, though? I feel like the heel face thing doesn't really matter anymore. If you're over with the crowd, you're over with the crowd. I feel like Stone Cold, 90% of the time, was a heel. Yeah. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of baby face in Stone Cold. No. He was anti. He was the anti girl. He was the punisher. But, uh, dude, I think stables is something that could do very, very well for WWE again if they willingly embrace it. And I feel like they half-heartedly are. I mean, New Day is kind of a stable. You've got that weird thing with uh, Stardust and the Ascension now. The cosmic waste. Oh, speaking of them, did you see that they? Uh, I'll, I'll have it up on the website later today. But did you see that they posted uh, a video for Batman Day? No. Strangest thing ever. Stardust does his best Mark Hamill impersonation, which I think was great. Um, I don't think he was trying to do it, and if he was, it wasn't. It was just something I picked up. Right. Um, I, I found it kind of weird that during this uh, promo. Stardust is uh, shouting out some of the big time creators that have made Batman what he is. All current. Nobody. It doesn't even mention Bob Kane. No mention of Bill Finger, Dennis O'Neill, Neil Adams. None of the old school guys. He mentions Grant Morrison. He mentions. Um, uh, uh, God, what was his name? Why can't I remember? Oh, God. It's going to bug the hell out of me. But it was somebody current. And then he mentioned Scott Snyder. And you're like, you just kind of scratch your head like, really? Yeah, that's weird. You know? like, That's really weird. Didn't even mention Jim Lee. You know? Yeah. There's a lot of guys that have worked on Batman over the years that have produced beautiful Batman tales and art. But, but it was just really weird how he did the impression. And then he's going on, like, naming villains and characters. It was just, it was really good. And it sounded very Mark Hamill Joker-esque. You know, and then uh, the Ascension ended up saying something in the background. They weren't, oh, something like Batman, congrats on reaching 75 years. Just remember, you'll always be protected by, and then that's when the Ascension says the Cosmic Wasteland. It's really weird, but it was still interesting that they did it, you know. Like, I could see Cody Rhodes wanting to do it because he's a comic fan. I don't know if the Ascension are comic fans, but I could see them just being like, well, we have to do it. You know, they really need to give those dudes a push, man. Something. Those guys could like, man. It's yeah. like one of the things that come out of NXT that was just like, just fizzled out, yeah. man. It's really sad. It is. Well, that's all I got for this week for uh, for the lockup here, right. guys and gals. Check out the spinner rack. Check out the rest of the past episodes of the lockup. Uh, new podcast. Let's talk toys coming soon. Have any questions, comments, concerns, you can get at us at Brian at comicsremix.com, Junior at comicsremix.com, Alex at comicsremix.com. Uh, I was making that ahead, right? Just kind of check out Alex's reviews. Remixed reviews. Um, what else do we got? God, there's so much. Uh, check out our blogs. We're posting on social media. Uh, comicsremix.com. I guess I'm gonna just go ahead and start promoting it. Comicsremix.com is live. Um, there, it's still being tweaked though. The website's not hundred percent perfect, so bear with us, but it's still up. It's still live. Um, there's still plenty of content there to check out. We're trying to get into the habit of blogging and posting stuff up at least two, three times a day. It's still new to us. So 
But uh, if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, let us know. If you are a wrestling fan, independent wrestler, you want to be on the show, let us know. Drop us a line. We're more, more than glad to have you on. Um, that's all I Tweet got. Tweet us, follow us on Twitter, Calvis Remix. It's been a wreck. Yep. Um, that's all I got, man. You got anything? Chi-Town Am I missing anything? chi so. Sideline's on uh, Instagram. Good Instagram. Yep. Instagrizzle. Yep. Uh, well, that's all I got, do, man. man. That's... So, uh, until next time, ladies and gents, be safe between the ropes. Peace.